Hello YouTube. Uh, new setup today. I'm trying to get different lighting, more contrast background, and I'm locked in Mortal Kombat with my camera over autofocus and auto light adjustment, so I'm not sure what's going to go on here. Uh, if it's completely illegible, just comment and we'll repost it with a slightly different try. So, Ruger, Mark IV, 2245. Uh, this is their latest incarnation of their uh, long-standing 2245 series. And uh, it looks like the primary design goal with the Mark IV um, was um, all about maintenance, basically. Um, they've made a gun that is slightly easier to take apart than the previous ones, which were uh, somewhat famous for their complexity especially where it came to uh, the recoil spring. Anywho, um, the only uh, notable thing uh, from the outside that I want to mention is that in order to take it down, the safety has to be on, and in order to get the safety on, it has to be uh, cocked. So if you can't see the safety, you're not going to be able to push the button. So that's important thing number one. Um, and if you pull the trigger again, uh, well, it's got a magazine safety as well. So magazine in, pull the trigger. Uh, can't put the safety on if it's not cocked. So once again, I'm just going to rack it and put the safety on. And here's basically what all the buzz is about. This button back here, you push it with your thumb. Top rotates off just like that. Now, for those of you who had the Mark 1, 2, or 3, and remember all that mainspring madness with, you know, point the gun up, point the gun down, stand up, sit down, fight, 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 uh, this is obviously significantly simpler. So once again, with the button pushed in, you rotate it forward, and then this lug here slips in to that, and that's the whole uh, upper takedown. So... Now, there's a whole lot of crazy new stuff going on. Not only is their button mechanism wacky complicated, but they've changed a bunch of stuff down here. And I think all of the changes were designed to make it easier. But uh, it took me a while to get through most of them, and I suspect that there's a host of changes that I haven't quite figured out yet uh, how they're supposed to make life easier. First, most of them seem to be things that would make your life harder. Um, I've got goop on mine. There we go. Anyhow, uh, for those of you who have never had the Ruger uh, 2245 target pistol uh, description here, I do have other videos on the Mark II and III. Um, essentially, it's a heavy-barreled target pistol. They do make a light-barreled version that has a suppressor. I'm not sure what the point is. The main value of this gun is it has extremely accurate target pistol. So right out of the box, it's got adjustments for elevation and windage um, built into it. It's a very uh, long distance between your front and rears. And uh, as 22 long rifle pistols go, it's just one of the most accurate ones out there. Uh, other peeps, people have made them. Uh, there's very famous ones, the Buckmark from Browning, from a million years ago, and uh, Smith and Wesson has joined the fray recently with their Victory 22 Victory, which is very nice. And arguably, I think the Victory is what spurned uh, spurred Ruger on to make this. Um, still think the Victory is a little easier to work with, but anyhow, uh, the feed ramp is built right into it, and you cannot separate the barrel from the rest of the slide area. It's a big chunk that just doesn't come apart and that means that cleaning it even on this fancy new version is a royal pain in the butt because the only way to do it is to basically get the old q-tips and go to town on the innards there's no shortcut in this as far as i can tell they still haven't decided to make it really easy to work with so we're left with that the ejector is um permanently uh, fixed in there. It's actually riveted in. Theoretically, it's replaceable, but I would not want to actually have to try and do that. And there's nothing else 
mechanical going on on the upper. All the parts are in this slide piece. And so to take the slide piece apart, you just lift off the uh, mainspring assembly here. And as soon as you get both little wings of this back piece off, ah, there we go, you've uh, released the spring tension. It only moves like a 32nd of an inch when that happens, but now the back can lift up. And once that happens, you can lift the front up at the same time and lift it straight up. You don't want to lever it up because it's, it's a straight rod and you'll bend it. Um, this is the uh, recoil system. So this gets compressed as this moves backwards and then it launches the whole thing forward. Um, this is an improvement over the earlier versions. It appears to be a single piece of metal that was now uh, shaped out, ground out, and put together. Um, and then the end uh, rounded off a little bit differently. I'm not sure how they did that, but basically it's still an assembly, but the Previous versions were like crimped over multiple pieces of metal, and this end was just squished when they were done to make it hold the uh, the retaining plate there. Anyway, it's still bought and sold as an assembly. Uh, the firing pin um, system is pretty straightforward. The hammer is going to come up through here and hit the firing pin, and that's going to carry the firing pin forward. So it pokes out the front, and it has an extractor system. So to get uh, the firing pin out, there's a pin in the side, and when you drive the pin out, it's not very tight. It's designed that way. It should just push out fairly easily. You can even relieve some of the pressure of the firing pin, and it'll sometimes just drop out. And at that point, you can uh, either just push down on the back and rotate the, the firing pin up. And I also grabbed the firing pin return spring and its little plunger slash holder piece. So basically, uh, in order to make sure the firing pin doesn't just strike when the gun closes, this is what holds that back a little bit. And it's also what ha when after the gun fires, what brings it away so that the firing pin isn't sticking out the breech face all the time. So there's a small cutout uh, there in the the firing pin channel and that's where the end of this little plunger goes so that just gives it somewhere to set and the back of the spring uh, basically this channel is milled out in such a way that the spring is always going to engage that little little nipple at the back of the uh, firing pin there so firing pin is sleek and funky contoured but that's really just so that it picks the spring up at the right place and uh, other than that, it's just a firing pin. Um, the extractor, uh, the, your extractor should be blued. Mine is, is silvered because I, uh, I launched it when I took it apart the first time and I still haven't found it. So this is an old one from a different gun. But uh, taking the extractor out of these, if somebody knows a handy tip to make that easier, please post it. Um, I've never found one and I hate doing it, but it's an important part of cleaning these because they do tend to build up a lot of funk. You always have to clean very carefully along the breech face so that rounds can seat all the way back. And occasionally, you know, extractors break and have to be replaced. Um, the plunger itself, if you're going to, you're going to have to back the plunger off and lift the extractor out. Now, if the cross pin that holds in the firing pin if this pin is still in the gun you're not going to be able to do this because the detent bottoms out and actually in order to get pulled far enough back to get the extractor out it intrudes into um, in into the ch channel where this pin goes so if the pins in there you, it, it's going to prevent the extractor from being removable now the way I've been doing this is to take my little hobby knife and jam it in there just to get it started and then I took a punch filed it halfway down hammered on it till it was flat and bent it over 90 degrees all of that just so I could have something to shove in there I mean, if you have you know dental picks or something that's you know close to the right shape to do this feel free but basically the idea here is to try and grab a hold of the plunger. Now I've managed to turn it to the side, which is 
not what I wanted to do. Oh, so close. Basically, once I get it held back all the way, uh, then I'm going to try and grab the pliers and lift the extractor straight up. Uh, you can technically tip it out if you're lucky and, and everything lines up. But uh, frankly, lucky has not been amongst my descriptions here. So the other thing I'm doing is I am flexing the extractor back to get it started because that's the easiest point to get the thin blade knife in. But uh, it's not much of a tip be honest. Okay. Now here's where you want to be careful. Uh, wherever this is pointed is critically important because if I lose this, the whole thing is going to go flying. I'm going to try and grab the extractor and lift it straight up. Ah, there we go. And now with my finger over it to catch the plunger and spring, I'm going to release. So, like I said, if somebody's got an easy way to do that, please share with the group. Uh, it's not the only company that has this basic design, um, but I don't know. I've never found an easy way. So, in the gun, this is what's going on. The extractor... Uh, sits down in a little cubby there and this pushes on that top half of it causing it to want to go in and so when it pops over around from the curved surface then it, the rim of the round will be back here behind the extractor and this is providing all that tension so that it holds onto the gun as it pulls it out until the ejector hits it and it goes flying and this is just a uh, it's not a blind hole, it obviously goes far enough back so that you can block that channel. If we tap that in there, you can see how you can how it comes all the way in and you can see it, which is why it's critically important to have removed this pin first. Getting it back together is significantly easier. Um, oh, by the way, these uh, little channels on the bottom, this channel is where the extractor that's I'm excuse me, the ejector that's permanently affixed in there rides. So uh, when the gun fires and it's pulling out, that little piece of metal shows up right there. And as you can kind of see from the shape of the breech face, that'll be right at the bottom corner of the round to kick it up and out of the gun. So spring goes back in, plunger goes back in, and you want the, so the plunger is, you know, half carved off. The, the full side is the top and the cut side is the bottom. And I'm just gonna use the extractor itself to line that up and then I'm gonna push it in and notice where it's riding. This is as far down as it will go right now. So uh, eventually when we get it all the way back, it'll snap further down. So we just wanna push it there to get it started. And then as we push, we're pushing down and back. And the minute it gets into its slot, it just falls into place wiggle it a few times to make sure it perfectly lines up with the plunger and that's it for getting that back together. Now for the firing pin and its little firing pin return spring and I don't know what you would call this holder, plunger, detent, placer, gizmo, which much it's you can always go open the manual and find out but <laughs> Who reads the manual? Okay, once I've laid that in there, the important part is that the front of it is in its little notch. And then I'm just going to put the firing pin down in there and scooch it forward. And I'll feel it grab uh, onto the spring. So it just kind of glides down in there and you get some resistance from that spring. And that tells you you're in the right spot. And then I'm going to start the cross pin. And then I'm just going to come back here with my finger, push it forward, and then insert my cross pin. So I move the firing pin forward because there's only, you know, so much space where it will get engaged. So if we pop that out again to look at it, it's not this hole, 
this would be the wrong hole because then the firing pin would be fixed and could not move at all. It's this wider hole so that it can actually move back and forth. And that's as far as the firing pin moves. Toot, toot. So not bang, bang, not bang, bang. That's, that's all she wrote. So again, I'm going to set firing pin in there, guide it forward, push it forward, and slip the pin in. And, and just to make sure everything's working, I'm just going to push it to make sure I'm not in that fixed hole. I'm in the large hole. Back together, good to go. Getting this piece in, uh, again, the only dangerous thing would be levering this out because if the front is in there and you lift, you're going to bend it. So I prefer to get the front seated in there first and then line the back up and then just push it a little bit forward. Uh, so again when you when you took it out it only you know pops back that far it's really close to being a perfect fit and you just want it centered and then uh, you just push it compress the spring the tiniest bit and it'll pop right into place and uh, that's pretty much it so that's the slide and then it just scooches whoops uh, right back in unless you've done something wrong <clears throat> In my case, I didn't have that top piece in all the way. Do, 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 do. That's the upper. Uh, I'm going to leave this out here as a reference because we're going to point at some bits of it as we do the lower. I'm also going to go into the magazine later because it's got some important things. Nothing changed from the old models, but some niceties. Now, notably, solid polymer back. Uh, so our main spring is somewhere else. Excuse me. What we're going to find is as well as the uh, slide retainer and the button, There's the, the button is attached to a little cylinder in here which contains and capti uh, captivates the whole main spring assembly in there. So it's a little more contained uh, and less integrated into the frame it just freely sits in there it's kind of neat so anyway first things first let's uh let's get these grip panels off uh hex key uh survey said this was i want to say five sixty fourths Uh, don't over tighten these and I'll show you why as soon as we get this one off which is uh, so these are just plastic polycarbonate whatever not polycarbonate I don't know what kind of plastic it is I don't know why I said that anyway this bushing this little brass uh, screw that's pressed into the plastic that's the whole piece um, if you bust this off, I am not sure if there is any repair hope for you. I think you're pretty much scrap nard. So if you over tighten this and strip this out, it's not going to be easy to, to get it back in there in a nice firm way that stays in the same place. And you're only going to get so many chances at that. Because um, if this starts to spin, it will be grinding the plastic down. I mean, theoretically, you could epoxy it back in, maybe. I don't know. My point is, don't over-tighten this. You're tightening into brass and plastic. On the flip side... Now, I also noted there was uh, more than one model of this that one had slightly different grip angles. I think it said it was supposed to be more like a 1911, which is weird, because this is called the 2245 because it's a 22 caliber gun but layout wise the safety and the slide release are more or less where they would be on a 1911 and the grip angle was supposed to be similar to the 45 caliber 1911 so i'm not 100% sure what the dealio is with the other one cuz uh i wasn't hanging out in the store that long so i didn't didn't get a chance to see um, so first things first with this, if you have the ambidextrous safety one you'll have to take that off and that means little itty bitty uh, hex 
head here. And I forget what size this guy was. I don't think he's labeled. Yeah, tiny. I want to say probably 1 16th or thereabouts. And uh, once you get the screw out, lift this straight off because as you can see on the underside, it's not just a hole, it's got dog ears. And that's because this uh, thing that it's attached to, it's the whole cross pin for the safety on the other side. And they basically carved out the end of it to make these two little wings. And that's all that it holds on by. And that's enough for it to grab and twist that pin so that it's actually, you know, moving the safety on both sides. But man, that's kind of fragile in my book. Uh, and, oh yeah, I remember the thing that I forgot before. Before you go any further in disassembly, you want to drop the hammer. So you have to put a ma uh, magazine in, make sure the safety is off, get your thumb here, because you don't just want it to slam into the parts. But pull the trigger and guide the hammer forward. That'll take it to a place where it's not under a ton of tension. And that will make everything else we're about to do much easier. And uh, specifically, what we're about to do is drift out the safety. And I will tell you, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to go on at once. First, if you can see, there's a detent that is actually in the body of the safety. So as we clear the frame, that's going to want to launch. And then secondly, the safety itself is very strange. It's on the outside of the gun, and it's moving a piece that's on the inside of the gun. And they're not one piece. They just interact in strange ways, and it's basically just a piece of sheet metal, and uh, it's going to get in our way pretty quickly. So anyway, there's a couple ways to do this. I just take something that's smaller than the threads, so I'm not going to damage the threads, and use that to push on the inside of the pin. And as I drift it out, I'm going to put my thumb over there to make sure that that detent doesn't go flying. So. Now I've got it far enough that I can actually grab that little uh, plastic spring and detent. And then I'm going to just kind of hang on to the hammer a little bit and push it the rest of the way out. So here is the safety itself. And uh, as you can see, it doesn't actually do anything in and of itself. Um, it doesn't block anything. It doesn't get in the way. Really, the large lug is the driver for the inner piece, which is the actual safety. So the safety selector uh, is just moving another piece around. And it's also the rotation pin for all the rest of the guts. So now that this is out, I can uh, gently, or not so gently, uh, let that go. And all the parts are going to come flopping out. So notable this is the safety itself and so uh, what goes on there is that this big end really just sits in there locked it doesn't actually move up or down so when you're moving the safety what you're doing is you're you're engaging this notch onto the sear on the inside and that's going to become important because as we go to put it back together this will be flopping all over the place and eventually you've got to get it lined up so that the big barrel of the safety can slide into it in the right position. Now the next chunk of crap to come out is going to be the hammer assembly. And I say assembly because it is. Unlike previous generations, uh, these parts do not all come flying apart the instant they're out of the gun. So that's a Marked improvement number two. We've got the whole button mechanism going for us. Yay. And now we've got a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, six parts that all hang together as one. So there's the magazine safety, which is this big black piece that I'm moving here. There's the spring for the magazine safety. There's the, the bushing that everything rotates around. The hammer itself, the hammer strut, and the hammer strut pin. That's a whole lot of parts, all holding together nicely as, a, as one happy unit. I'm going to set that aside for now. And uh, we're going to deal with a couple other things. One, the sear just fell out on its own. So the sear pin, once, once it's disengaged from the hammer, 
there's just other parts that are going to start falling out. I'm going to put this back for a second because I didn't mean for that one to come out yet. It's not a secret or anything, but we'll stay there. So this is the sear system, and it was sitting in the gun like so. Do, 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 do. And uh, that's the that hole there is the one that the sear pin goes through. And this pin was visible on the side here. And it basically does this. And that means the spring wants to bring the top of it towards the back of the gun. That's where it's going to interact with the hammer. And when we pull the trigger, what we'll be doing is uh, actually putting pressure on this surface here, which will pull uh, the sear back. So it sits like this. The sear pushes on it and it backs off of the hammer. So bang when it releases. So we're going to set those three aside for now. And um, I'm just going to take this out. So this is the trigger bar. And when it rotates up, the trigger return spring and plunger come out. And these actually have two functions. Um, one is they make the trigger come back forward, but the other thing they do is they push the trigger bar, always want to push the trigger bar into its uppermost position. When the gun disconnects, the trigger bar will get pushed down. It's this spring, the same spring that's pushing that forward, is always pushing the trigger bar up. And that, so it's a two function system. And let's see. Uh, where did I want to go next? I'm going to set this aside. No, no, I'm going to go ahead and take... Never mind. I'm taking this out. All right, so we're going to take out the front system next, and that starts with uh, this guy. This is your uh, slide, st slide lock. It's just a metal piece that's the exact right size, big hole, to sit around the plastic housing of the brass bushing. And on the back side, it's got that little U-shaped cutout. And that whole purpose in life is to grab on to this big head pin. Uh, so when you put it back together, you make sure that you tuck that under and then slap it in. So when I lift this up with my thumb, I'm actually lifting a different piece of metal based on the big pin. The big pin is attached to the actual slide lock. So lifting it up lifts that. And there's a spring up here in this little cutout rounded area there's a uh, coil spring that is under the far side of the plunger so that when there's nothing else happening it wants to rest in the unlocked position so uh, that's a little different um, than previous generations as well but the important thing is you have to have that piece off before you can go after the rest of this now uh, the rest of this is retained by this pin. This pin is going through the trigger itself and the slide lock, but it's got a groove in the pin, uh, and there's a wire underneath it pushing up that's retaining it. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this until we get it off, but if you can peek right down in there. So if you follow the trigger bar and then look right in front of it at the bottom, you see a little looks like a punch facing up. Let's see if I can't point to it. Okay, right there. That is the retaining wire. And in order to get this apart, you have to push that wire straight down. And uh, we can do that pretty much without looking. And then at the same time, we want to uh, start that pin moving uh, towards the inside. So I'm going to reach in with this, and I can tell I'm on it because it's springy. So when I push forward, I get resistance. I'm going to push it down and start that pin moving. So uh, as I knock this pin out, I have to be a little bit careful because the trigger will come loose, which is not a big deal, but so will the slide lock and potentially its little spring there. So I want to make sure I'm prepared to catch that spring in some fashion. So as I move this all out, uh, we'll now be able to take out the whole trigger and trigger bar. We'll be able to lift out the slide lock. And remember, uh, 
the big head uh, the, this hole is only wide enough in the middle so don't try if it's up at the top you're not going to get it out if it's down at the bottom you're not going to get it out center it and you'll get it out and then as I said down in this little perfect cutout for it is a coil spring and that coil spring was just sitting right under there to uh, push this guy into place and as I also mentioned, that retaining spring was coming up under this pin in the big groove. There's a little groove there too, but the big groove is what that spring locks into. Uh, the trigger and trigger bar are, there's two holes. The large hole is where the cross pin actually goes, that it rotates around. And this one here actually has got stepped, so there's a kind of a pin with a head, and the whole head recesses in there, and uh, that goes around. Earlier we talked about the trigger return spring and plunger. And so they sit in the trigger itself in that hole. And as you can see, if something pushes the trigger bar down, that spring is going to push it up. And it's also going to, at the same time, push the trigger forward after you push it back. So multi, two functions, one spring. go more into the hammer sear system in a second but we got to get one last piece out so the magazine release obviously it's spring loaded or it wouldn't come back out but it's retained by this big old wire spring it's the same wire spring up here that was holding that pin in so before I re in order to release the pin that went across there I simply was pushing down on this end enough that I could get it passed well, if you follow this wire, it's kind of clipped into the frame, and then it runs right down, I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not, um, along the magazine safety, and it stays against the side of the frame, uh, but it is keeping the magazine release, excuse me, not safety release, from launching out of the gun. So, putting a finger over the catch, I'm just going to come in here and lift this spring up to pop it free from the frame at which point it will rotate back and then come completely out of the gun towards the inside. Now nothing is retaining my magazine catch, so I can slide it straight out. And remember, there's going to be a spring and detent here too, so don't lose these. And uh, that's what's going on there. So from the other end, what's happening is this little tiny hole in there if you notice, this spring has a little 90 degree angle there. That's so that on the inside, it's actually poking that tiny curve uh, end up into the frame where that little hole is. And then once the magazine catch is in, passed uh, you know, into this area, it comes down and clamps in there. So basically it, it does this. So it's going to sit. <laughs> It's going to sit on the magazine safety right here so that you can move it that far, but because this big end is here, it can't come over the spring and can't fall out of the gun. So it's retaining the magazine catch, and then it tucks into that little notch in the frame and sits right there under that pin, waiting for us to push it down just a little bit to get the pin out of the gun. So again, two functions, one spring. I'm going to leave this in there for just a second because we now have the hammer system out. So I'm going to come back. We're going to do the rest of this. We're just going to pause and talk about the functional bits for a minute. So the gun has a magazine safety and it has a safety safety and they both are sear blocking safeties. So when the safety is on, excuse me, I got the hiccups this piece is going to be coming down and hanging on to the sear remember the sear has to move backwards to to release the hammer so if something is holding that obviously it, it can't move backwards so anything with a little square notch there chances are it's hanging on to the sear so that's the safety itself and uh no, lo and behold the same shape appearing again um in the form of the uh, magazine safety. 
So what's happening here is again, the sear can't move far enough off so the hammer can't drop unless something lifts this out of the way. Uh, and what lifts it out of the way is of course the magazine. So these two little guide ends uh, match the contours of the magazine. So when the magazine is pushed in, that brings the magazine safety up and out of the way. So it sits like that, kind of in the gun, until the magazine is there, and now it's going to move the safety out of the way. So uh, the spring for the magazine safety is this crazy shaped spring, and it's crazy shaped for a reason. It basically has to get around all the other components and stick into the side of the gun. So that's really moving around a whole lot of stuff there. Now, uh, the other thing is that this is all staying as an assembly. And the reason is um, because the bushing has... Um, several cuts on the inside so it's not just smooth all the way to this big washer looking end it actually has uh, other cuts and grooves in it and the spring gets lodged in those so unless the spring is perfectly centered you can't actually remove the bushing so the spring itself is the bushing retainer and I'll go ahead and slide that the rest of the way out so you can see what I'm talking about so uh, in our bushing here, that little tiny wire spring has a coil and that coil is going to get lodged between these two rims and that's going to act as a retention mechanism for the whole thing, which is great. Of course, once it's dislodged, as we have here, uh, everything can come apart. So here we can see the crazy spring and its big coil and we can see how it really just barely squeezes past that so it's kind of tricky getting it on and off which makes it a decent retainer so that once it's in there you know it's not going to wiggle itself off you really have to line it up and pop it off um, and then the uh, magazine safety itself now the the short leg here so there's the long leg with all the crazy path and then the short leg the short leg is just lying in this groove in the magazine safety. So it sits like that. So if something rotates it back, there's force to push it back down. So when the magazine is in, it'll flex the spring and the spring will just push it right back down when the magazine goes away. Now the reason I was being a little ginger with this hammer is because this is no longer pinned in place. In the earlier versions, the hammer strut was a uh, had a had a retaining pin that was peened in so it was hard to get out and hard to replace this one it's not there is a recess for the head of this pin and no tension on it at all and then there's this little universal leg there's no front or back to it near as i can tell it's just uniformly shaped and so that goes in and then this pin slides down in and holds the whole thing together and does sit all the way flush because there's like I said a recess for the head so I'm gonna go ahead and take that back out for just a second and show up uh, talk a little bit about how the ha hammer and sear work so the gun is cocked the sear and hammer sit like this there's a notch in the hammer and then when you pull the trigger to fire the gun what you're doing is you're bringing the sear you're angling the sear towards the front. So as soon as it comes out of that notch, the hammer is free to fall. And then the sear has you know, a spring on it that's gonna push it back into place. And so as soon as the gun is cocked past that point, it snaps back into that notch and catches the hammer again. So that's that's the whole sear engagement area. It's, it's relatively small, it's very clean, gives you a nice crisp break. And, uh, but the sear's got a whole lot of meat to it anyway, for other reasons. Um, where it engages the, uh, the trigger is, if you can see that uh, this little area here, again, just a piece of sheet metal that's bent and punched 90 degrees towards the inside. So when, let's, let's hold it the right way for the gun. 
So if the sear is sitting like this and we're pulling the trigger, try and get the angle a little closer to reality, um, you're going to pull the trigger like that. The trigger bar um, bumps in and pulls forward on this ledge. And so that's pulling the trigger. It just brings the sear away. Now what's going to happen is as this rotates around the sear pin, um, if you follow what's going on here, I'm going to do this from the opposite side. The sear is sitting at an angle like that. As something, as the trigger bar is pulling forward here, that is actually going to be going higher and higher and higher in the gun. Now, once it's here, that's the the highest off. But when it's down here, it's much closer to the plane of the pin, which means that as I'm pulling the trigger, I will eventually bottom out, and the gun goes bang. Now I'm still holding the sear. But now the disconnect will happen as the gu as the gun cycles, the um, the slide will bump into this and push it down. So here I've engaged it and I'm holding the sear off the hammer, but then it hits me and I go down. And now there's clearance. So underneath that is clearance. If I'm pushing right on the, the side, I'm going to move the sear and hold the sear. So if I come in like that, I'm holding on to it. But the minute the trigger guard gets pushed down, the sear has room to rotate back into place. And so that's how the disconnect works, is I'm pulling it forward, gun goes bang, disconnect happens, and the sear can rotate back and catch the hammer once again. So that's the sear system. Now, you might ask, what's all this beef uh, underneath the sear? If the sear is all this stuff at the top and it engages, you know, the trigger bar there and the hammer up here, what's all this stuff for? Is it, does it need to be balanced in some fashion? And the answer is no, that's actually an assembly trick. Uh, that lets you get the sear in without putting it under any string tension, and then uh, you can put a magazine in and that will hold the bottom of it and keep the sear uh, where you need it during assembly. It's kind of cool. Uh, I'm just going to scooch my pile of crap back and continue on the frame because there's a few more bits we want to talk about. I'm going to do an easy bit first. They added a very cool mechanism. I'm not sure if other models have had something similar. I've seen it in other guns. But basically, when, now remember, we've already taken the magazine catch out, so there's no catch. But notice that if I push this in and let go, it launches, it's spring-loaded now. A big problem with the earlier versions is that you could put a magazine in, and it would stay in, and it would seem like it had been caught. But the magazine catch might not have actually gotten it. And if you jostled the gun or took that first shot, you would find the magazine fall right back out. And so in order to avoid that, you have no doubt anymore. If it, if it stays in, it's because the magazine catch caught the magazine. Otherwise, there's a big old button down there that pushes it right back out. It also helps eject. Once you push that button, you're going to get some extra force ejecting it from the gun. And it's a really simple mechanism. There's just a big plastic button and a spring and a plastic piece that goes uh, through the frame here. So I'm just going to push in the plastic button a little bit and fail. Push that pin out. This is just a polymer pin, and then I gently let up on that. Gently, he said, as he hammered the gun. And there's its spring. So there's just a, a cylindrical hole in there, and the cross pin rides on the flat surface there, so it's mostly flat, and then there's a full the cylinder is full at the rear, so that means that it stops it from coming out. So this pin not only retains it, but uh, yeah, it retains it and creates that surface for it to smoothly move at in and hold its uh, same rotation the whole time. And so I'm going to tuck that back in and put the cylinder back in and push down. Whoops, sorry, that was off frame. Put my polymer pin back in. 
and make sure it still moves. So it's simple, that's why I reassembled it. All right, now, uh, the button and the mainspring assembly. Um, if yours isn't dirty, you might not want to go into this. This gets a little fiddly, um, and it's got some very fine springs in there that, that retain it. And I, I don't think there's a trick to getting past them. In other words, you have to punch this, pu this pin out. And doing so uh, tends to kind of put some pressure on those pins. So if I can get a nice staccato tap to get it moving. And then one more. Am I through? Nope, not quite. So a couple things happen here. One is once it's more than halfway out, that's all that's retaining the, uh, the slide catch. And what I'm running into now is probably one of those little cross pins that holds this in. It's just hard to see. Um, I'll just try it again. There it goes. So this little pin here has those dog bone recesses. That's because there's a really tiny spring in there uh, that's that's going to catch that pin and keep it from sliding left and right. So now that I have it, I'm going to push the button and grab it from the back at the same time, pull out my punch, and lift the whole assembly straight out of the gun. And then I'm going to gently release the pressure on the button because there's nothing keeping it from launching. So when it's in the gun, the pin itself keeps the button from going any further out. Once it's out, however, uh, you've got space to launch. It has two springs in the button and they go into two little holes uh, and they sit nicely in there. They're deep recessed holes. And then this is the button. Uh, this piece, this uh, thin wire here, is this spring, basically is the re retainer for uh, this pin. So this pin can move through here freely, except that those guys lock into those two little ears there. So when you're knocking this pin out, that's what you're fighting against, is getting it to pop over those little pins. If you happen to mangle one of them, they're very small, uh, Thin, they're not attached super hard so the whole mechanism comes out and you can kind of reshape it as you need and then uh, tuck it back on it just has two itty bitty holes in the side of it that it goes into and then it kind of sits on the bottom now you can see how these guys interact with each other so the the top surface has little rails cut into it uh, under there and that fits onto that piece of the of the button so that's how the button slides back and forth and uh, the, the retaining pin just also goes through the middle of this piece so it's doing a whole bunch of things at once there and um, Thinking, thinking. Oh, the last bit is the mainspring itself. And I won't lie, I'm not 100% positive as to whether you're supposed to be able to remove this or not. I'm sure Ruger will eventually be selling it as an assembly, but I did notice that it's hex shaped. So there is actually a, a hex key shaped uh, hole there, which implies that the cylinder itself is probably screwed in here. Now, in the center of it is our main spring, so if we push on this, you know, that's our big spring. Um, and the question is, well, if that got broken or rusted or whatever and you wanted to replace it, can this be unscrewed? And the answer is, I don't know. I've already put a um, pretty good amount of torque on it and gotten nowhere, and I didn't want to break it. I don't know if it's reverse threaded or even if it's just permanently uh, 
push pressed in there for all I know. I just don't have those answers. So unless somebody gets one apart and can answer that, I'd say leave this as a mech as a assembly and don't try and take it down any further. Um, otherwise you're liable to shear the whole thing off and have no gun. The last piece for disassembly was uh, just one I'm going to show you. I don't recommend you guys taking this one out. This is just a view as to how the locking block works. So that screw, uh, it's threaded only on you know halfway through, so it sits in there. So there's threads in the, this middle bit, and uh, it's the locking mechanism. It's the locking lug, so it's the point of energy transfer between the uh, the slide and the frame. And so the idea is that that slide is a big chunk of metal, and it's going to want to come backwards with some velocity. So this is the rotation point, and you can see that, you know, that that's, it sits in there and comes down. But if you look at the angles of this, this piece is actually going to be, when it rotates down, it snugs up and makes good solid contact, which means when the gun fires, this, this piece is where that's transferred. It's not pulling it apart from the front. It's, pulling, it's pushing on the back, which means this big round surface uh, is, the, you've got, that whole polymer cup in here that holds that is is going to basically get all that force evenly distributed around a whole lot of surface area so that's why it's thick and reinforced in there and goes into one of the thicker pieces of the frame itself so that's what's going on there is that that whole mechanism's point in life as well as to give you a metal to metal takedown point is also the the transfer point into the frame and I think that's pretty solid I don't see that breaking anytime soon so like I said if you don't need to take yours off for some reason don't there's no reason in cleaning you would need to take that out and uh, you don't want it to come loose so I'm just gonna snug mine back up and that's it there are no more bits I, I already put these ones back in but you saw all that so now it's reassembly time. So since we started with uh, the button, we'll put the button back together. So the first thing you want to do is uh, take these two little springy dingies and put them back in their little cup. And uh, note these um, two little nipples on the receiving end there they are going to actually engage in the far sides of those springs. So I'm going to hold this upside down as I reassemble it, just so I can make sure that those springs actually engage the little nipples. If I'm off, that would make a mess when I went to push the button. It would, it would, it would be bad. So make sure that those are, are catching both springs and pay attention to it over the next couple steps here because if, if it slips off or you drop it and one of those comes cattywampus again, you know, things will get mushed if you just keep going. Now, the next part is, is it just slips down. There's a hole in the frame deep in there that it kind of wiggles its way into. But for the most part, we're going to actually hold this in place by hand. And the deal is that you have to be pushing the button itself. But if you just push it without putting your thumb in front of it, it's going to cant and you're not going to be able to line the hole up. So you actually have to put your thumb and your finger at the same time and look to make sure you can see the hole lining up. So I can be off to the front, off to the back. I need to be perfectly lined up and I am still gonna see the uh, little thin springs that are the cross springs. Um, the pin is uh, contoured so that it should push past those. But I'm only gonna put it halfway in. I'm only gonna put it halfway in because we still need to put in uh, this guy. The flat side is the front and the rounded side is the back. Okay. And that slides right in there and we just gotta make sure that the pin goes through him. And now we should be just about to the far side. And 
So one good tap sends him home. And then I'm just gonna push in a little bit to make sure that I am in those little retaining springs and I can hear him. And now I can push my button. Yay. I'm gonna set this aside for a second and we're gonna redo, re reassemble the hammer assembly. So the hammer strut goes in there. The little pin sits on top and gets flush, recessed flush. The, uh, the spring is going to go into position um, like so. All of our bits, and then somewhere is the bushing itself. So, coming up from the far side, yeah, the bushing is next. So, pushing through the spring, and I don't just want to squish this bushing down. Remember that, that that spring is the key, so you want to look at the spring and try and get it lined up so that the bushing can snap through it evenly. If you just squish it, you'll bend the spring. So uh, that's the order, is that there's it, really not a whole lot of ways to do that wrong. Um, <clears throat> once that snaps over, the bushing will be flush against the magazine safety, and you've got your whole assembly rebuilt. So now we'll come back here and start uh, putting together things basically in the same order we took them out. So your magazine catch and the big long spring are your first things to go in. Make sure that your spring, that your magazine catch spring spring is in there. And um, I think I find it easiest to try and get this guy into place first. And it's pretty hard to see. You're just kind of poking around in the dark there. But you'll 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 feel it catch, and you just want to hold it against the right side of the of the frame. And then you're going to put in uh, the magazine catch, and it's got you know a half moon shape, so you should just be able to fairly easily see when it's lined up. Now at that point, when it's lined up, just push it all the way through, and then rotate our little spring forward, and it's going to catch that. And I'm just holding the finger in there for good measure. And what I want to do now is make sure that this little spring gets tucked down into the frame properly and is caught in there. Um, if it is properly caught, then everything should work. We should have a little bit of spring force there. It should be you know, pretty far forward and, and down in there. And that's, that's great because now it's holding in our magazine catch and it's ready to hold in the trigger pin. So next set of parts is we're gonna put the spring for the slide lock and it has a little groove cut into the frame so it just drops right down in there. There's a cylindrical hole for it to go in. And then we want to remember that the big head of the slide lock has to go through the middle and then we will rotate it into place and make sure that it's setting on top of its little spring there. And then we have the trigger and trigger bar itself. <laughs> and they just slide in there as well. Oh, my fat fingers. There we go. My trigger bar had slipped out a little bit. Okay, that looks like all the pieces. Now we're going to come in from the far side and start the pin in because we're going to have to push a lot of things into place. So the first thing is that this bar, we're going to have to push down against the spring tension. We know that coil spring is there, and so it's not going to be perfectly lined up. You probably can't see that in there, but if I, uh, do, 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 if I move it around with my finger, I'll be able to eventually line it up, or alternatively, I could be clever and uh, just come in from this side of the gun with a punch and line them all up that way. That's the smart way to do it. And remember, the, 
the retaining pin is on the right side, so that end goes in first. So as I as I completely fail, right. so I use the punch to to pull down on the slide lock uh, to get its hole to line up. I think I'm even through the trigger now, and then the last thing I need to do is same as uh, with disassembly. Oh, sorry hope you guys can see all this is I want to come in and push down on that spring I know that that's my retention spring and I'm not going to get past it uh, without pushing it down so <clears throat> you also have to line it up with the frame and you'll hear it click pretty solidly once it's in place so if we did that right, this should have downward tension, which it does, and we've got our, uh, our trigger bar. I'm going to go ahead and put in, actually I'm going to leave these out for just a second. I'm going to leave this out too. I'm trying to think of the clever way to do this. I've I won't lie, getting the sear in has been a little bit of a struggle for me. Um, there's basically the idea is it, you can start it fairly easily. So if you can get the spring, the spring leg, the large leg of the spring will sit in there. Uh, that's the top. The coils face forward, the legs face the back of the gun. So if you flip the spring around, uh, it's not going to do anything. You need it like this. So it can, the short leg pushes on the top of the sear there. So basically what I'm going to try and do is get it in there uh, with my big fat finger. Or possibly a skinnier finger. And try and get it lined up the sear pin. Mm, that seems to have been moderately successful. So what that leaves me with is the short leg is sticking pretty much straight up. And then now I've got to get uh, this piece in there. But I can put it in there pretty close to horizontally. And uh, I really just have to make sure that the leg is in the right place. That would not be it. And now I've dropped the sear spring. There's an easy way to do this. I just haven't found it quite yet. I know I'm missing something obvious. Uh, they... Come on. Too many fingers. Alright, try this again. Quail facing the front. Spring lined up in its little cubby hole. Do, 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 do. Come on, spring. Sear pin through the coil of the spring. Alright. More or less correct. And so I'm going to just do this on its side so it doesn't slide around as much. Actually, I'm going to do it on this side so the spring doesn't fall off. Just get this obnoxious trigger bar out of my way. And So that is what I was attempting to do. It doesn't matter that it's laying completely horizontally. It's in the right orientation. The cylinder side of it is to the right. The sear pin is all the way through it. And the spring is coming up in the middle. Which means that if there is tension, if something is pushing it forward, it's going to want to push backwards. And now, since that sear pin really wants to move around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my fat finger in there to I'll push the tail down a bit. Um, oh, also, if you're manipulating this, make sure the sear is moved 
to the right side. Uh, if it's horizontal, it can actually move a little bit left and right. And if you move it to the right side of the frame, it'll bind when you try and rotate it. So keep it uh, pushed to the right side of the frame and rotate it up. Now I'm holding it like this while I put in a magazine because what the magazine is going to do is it's going to hold the sear because now the back of the sear can't rotate. It bumps into the magazine itself. So that's going to be an assembly aid is to have that magazine in there. Uh, and it's just going to, otherwise the, there's no tension on the sear. It's going to want to flip horizontal and then fall out of the gun. This way we have tension on it. Now the other thing I can do while I'm here is go ahead and connect the slide lock. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to just hook the little U-shaped prongs over the, the big head pin and then pop that on. That has two reasons I did that. One is it just makes life easier. And two is it partially blocks that sear pin. So the only way it can come out is through the far side. And uh, now is where things get kind of interesting because uh, we will put the spring back in there, but we're getting close to you know final assembly. And this is where things are a little bit strange. You can get a sense a little bit about how the safety works. It, you know, it's going to notch over that sear and uh, move the sear out of the way. And so what I'm going to do is I put the safety in place, notched it over over the sear itself, and I'm I'm just going to try to get uh, the pin started. And the reason I'm going to do that is because. Uh, it's it's really hard to manipulate all these parts at once and I've been trying to find a way to, to make that as easy as possible um, and so I'm trying to give some some hints as we go here so again with this piece just lying in there and hooked onto the the sear we're gonna come in and uh, I'm gonna use the punch to try and manipulate it yeah that'll work idea here is to just get this piece started. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. Um, what I've done is I just use my finger to move the, the to, I notched the safety onto the sear and then pushed it ever so slightly forward. So now instead of just relying on the magazine to hold it in, it's actually re relying on just the very end of this pin. And we don't want the pin going any further than that because it'll get in the way of the rest of our parts, which we're about to shove in all at once. So, um... I'm going to let the magazine come partially out so I can reach this hole for the do, 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 for the trigger return spring and the plunger. A large piece of my wife's hair. Not sure how that got in there. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the plunger is in there. I'm going to go ahead and set that magazine all the way back in. And now we've got to put in this whole bit as an assembly. And we don't want to tip the gun in the direction that's going to make this fall out and lose the sear system. But what we do have to do is have all these pieces lined up at the same time. And uh, that's not as easy as it would sound. So <clears throat> the spring for the magazine safety has to be... Uh, tucked down into its little groove there. The hammer pretty much you want up. If it's down, you're going to be pushing against the, the hammer spring. And so it's kind of kind of holding it like this. And then the whole bushing end here, that goes into the little window in the trigger bar. So that actually sits like this. 
and that's how we're going to put this in there. But it's not that simple. <clears throat> as well as making this an assembly, they, they did that in such a way as to give you a easy way to get it started into the gun. This little spring we want to be showing up in that side window. If you put it straight in, like if we were lined up with the trigger bar and we rotated the whole package backwards, you'd find it was pretty hard to get that spring to go into the window. But if we come at it at an angle, so I'm going to push it in in this direction, I'll be able to see that little spring and make sure it gets started in that window first. And then I can come down and uh, while it's still leaning over, then I can bring the trigger bar down and now I can hold them as an assembly. So uh, again, I let it sit off to the side while I put it into place so that I could make sure that the spring got started into the side of the frame. And once I was happy with it getting started there, I have enough wiggle room that I can get the trigger bar past it to the point where the bushing is now in its, in its window. And from here, now it's a matter of getting everything lined up and getting the pin through it all. So the magazine safety is going to push up against the magazine and the hammer is going to push up against things as well. But basically you can get in from the side and get a punch through the bushing which is going to get you 99% of the way towards where you need to go. So, um, You do have to be careful because of the uh, little wings on the safety there. You don't want to get one of those wings started into a hole and not not both of them. So you got to make sure that you really are lined up at each step. <clears throat> so again, I was just pushing gently in as I grabbed the hammer and could manipulate it into place. Uh, there's some other things to be looking out for as we go. Eventually the hammer strut will, will get poked down uh, into the fring. So we're pretty good there in terms of how that's lining up. Everything's lining up fairly nicely actually. So I'm going to continue to use grabbing the hammer and looking through this hole to line stuff up. I'm going to continue to slowly work the, uh, the safety through. Now, I hit this point and I got to come back and deal with two other pieces. One is my spring and detent for the safety itself. So I will get those started. Or possibly I'll just drop them. <clears throat> And then the next thing I'm going to run into, I'm the, the little winglets on that pin are in the frame, but I can't go much further because um, I'm going to bump into the inside piece of the safety. So notice that there's an opening here instead of the bottom of the safety. If I come up here and I actually tug on that, I will be able to manipulate this inner piece of the safety until it can line up with the nice fat safety bushing itself. And at the same time, now I'm all the way through. And with the safety off, I should be able to actually push that back and get some tension. And so all that's left to do here is uh, attach the ambidextrous side of the safety and again you know it's got the little ears to match clamps there
so seem to be running out of extra parts that's the whole thing um, I'm going to show you a couple things about the magazine <clears throat> I want to see if this one has the same features as the mark three so first we're just going to pop the side panels back on on the left side panel make sure you tuck it under the, uh, the slide release Again, not too tight on those. Oh, uh, let me go ahead and finish assembly here. So uh, you want to cock the hammer before you try and put the frame back on the slide. Uh, if you don't, um, bad things are going to happen. Now, in order to cock the hammer, magazine safety has to be defeated as well. Both safeties have to be off for the sear to have the room it needs to move. So if either if, if either the thumb safety or is is on white or the magazine is out, you're not going to be able to cock the hammer. All right, so uh, notice you can over cock it. If that happens, just push it back to the correct cock position. And then with the safety on, now we can push the button. Safety off, we can't push the button. Safety on, we can. And so now we can make sure that this is all together. Put him on his little lug and snap. <laughs> My safety is gummed up. I think I might actually have gotten a little bit of a defective one here. So our spring is there doing its job. It's retaining it down. But when mine is locked back, it's like almost no amount of force of thumb it can overcome it. It's really hard. And, um, hmm, let me double check that. Whoops, safety on so we can disassemble it. Did I maybe miss that spring somehow? It feels like we had spring tension. I can see the spring. You know what it is? I think there was a detent there that I lost the very first time I took this gun apart. And that's been why it's been giving me heartaches because the spring alone does not make good contact with the end of this piece. So hopefully everybody made it all the way to the video and you noticed that you had a detent there um, and you got that in there. Otherwise you'll have to knock that pin out and you don't have to take the back out. You can just knock that pin out and reassemble it. And I now have something to look for all over my floor because it can't have gone too far, but I'm not going to look for it now. But that's what's going on with why is my safety not spring-loaded like it's supposed to be. Anyway, um, we went through all that just so we could talk about the magazine because there's um, one thing you can do to change the magazine. So with this magazine, it locks back on the last round. And um, I believe if it works the same way as the previous generations, if you don't like that, you can defeat it. So if you want to take the magazine down, push in on the base plate and uh, 
trying to remember if it goes forward or backwards at that point. Oh dear, did they change this on me? No, I'm just slow. Oh dear. All right, so <clears throat> this little knobby, this is so when you load it, you don't shove, you never shove rounds into a 22 caliber magazine. You always bring the follower down to make room and you drop, you know, the, the rim of the round in there and let it just seat on its own. That's why they almost all have this mechanism. But what you can do with this one is, as well as you take it all the way to the bottom, if you need to disassemble it, then you can get the whole follower out. The other thing you can do is uh, put it in the other side of the gun. And if you do that, in the previous models, that actually defeated the uh, the bolt hold open feature. If for some reason it was not a feature you wanted. So people who don't like using the slide lock at all or just only want to use it when they want to lock it open, they just switch the magazine so the thumb lever is on the far side, on the right side of the magazine, and that stops it from uh, locking open on the last round. So that is the Ruger Mark IV 1022. My apologies on that spring. I. Uh, I wonder if I have the manual lying around still, just to check to see if there's a picture that can tell you for sure if I actually lost that pin. This is a brand new gun. Let's see if they give us a diagram or not. Oh, but apparently you never climb a tree with a loaded firearm. Good to know. Well, so part seven here is the, uh, the slide release, and part four is that little spring. So I'm wrong. Which means mine is just gummed up for no particular reason, and that kind of pisses me off. So see if we can do one last piece of the video here of see if I can figure out why that spring maybe my spring is just canted it does look like it's off to one side of it I'm not sure if you can see that on camera or not there we go Look like it's off to the side just a little bit. Yeah, with nothing to hold it in place. Well, I will leave that up to you guys to try and figure out what is not quite right about that spring. It certainly feels like uh, it's supposed to have more tension than it does. And... It really doesn't look like it's catching very well. It looks like basically it's only catching on half the coils. So it's like really doesn't have any room for the spring. 
to expand. The spring is more or less stuck. Alright, well, let me try one thing. It would be really nice to not leave this with a mystery. So if I start this side out again, and we take this out. it out enough to get to our spring. I can certainly get a better view of it. Well, there's our spring. see anywhere else where it could go. But yeah, that, that really doesn't quite go far enough to engage that very solidly. What were they thinking? Why did they not make that longer? I'm never going to push down more than just the edge of that pin, of that spring rather. I feel like I'm always going to be off. Another thing I'm wondering is if maybe the curved cutout was an illusion and it was actually tucked closer to the pin. I guess we can try that too. Instead of putting it in the hole that appears to have been custom made for it, I wonder if I could sit it instead into that little recess in front of it. Like it's a tighter fit. tight in fact that it can't even compress. the wrong answer. Alright, well, I guess I'll leave that for you guys in the comments, for somebody smarter than me to figure out why my spring, when it's in the correct place, is uh, so flighty. 
Have I grabbed the wrong spring? Should this be a longer spring? And maybe I've somehow managed to grab the wrong part? Seems to fit in that hole remarkably well for it to somehow be the wrong part. But man, there's just no real estate back there for it to grab onto. And if it went all the way back, I would feel better about it. But since it doesn't, I'm left to wonder if there's uh, something going on more than meets the eye. And as we noted, unless I'm going blind, So, two is the locking block, three goes through that, four is that little coil spring. Not sure what 35 is. I suspect 35 might be a screw that's not actually there anymore. Well, I don't see it, guys, so if somebody has a revelation, let me know. This has actually got several changes from the actual firearm. You know, the retaining pin is different. Their magazine seems to have an extra piece. Magazine catch, rather. It makes it look like the recoil spring and rod can somehow come out through the top although I didn't see any way for that to happen they don't show the extra bits on the bushing that's kind of neat they show several things that are just ever so different but either way piece 4 doesn't seem to have a detent so I'm out of ideas on that one <clears throat> thanks for watching guys stay safe out there hope you had fun and remember it's a snap Ha ha ha. They killed me. Stay safe.